let me throw another ball in the air, just because we're juggling at this point. And there's a drug, Luz Pat <laughs> I hate these names, Luz Patercept. What is that? Where does that fit in this whole picture? Well, actually, uh, this is part of the new approaches to treatment. Luspatercept is a molecule uh, that uh, was found to be useful or possibly useful to treat thalassemia just by chance. It was a serendipity observation because it was on the mark already in study for treating osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. And what was seen is that hemoglobin of these normal hematological ladies went up uh, significantly. So they stop and say, what is going on? So looking in an animal model, loose patercept is a compound which uh, belong to the uh, beta uh, super family growth factor and uh, is uh, actually acting uh, uh, as uh, an active receptor trap. So I don't want to go in many details, but the active in receptor are expressed on neutral cells, and uh, the luspatercept uh, uh, interfere with the receptor, and doing that is going to control a pathway, SMAD pathway and so on, which is responsible of controlling erythropoiesis, or which contribute. So doing that, it's come out that is reducing ineffective erythropoiesis. Who gets it? Who gets this drug? Well, uh, the, the phase three trial has been just completed. The FDA approved. That's, uh, by the way, your trial, right? Is that right? Well, not only mine. <laughs> I was the PI, but uh, most of the people. I mean, uh, there were, I think, 65 centers all over the world. Okay. So it was a, a fascinating and a uh, real uh, nice experience. And this, the, the result of this trial allowed to be presented at FDA, which uh, beginning of November approved the drug. For whom? For those, uh, so far, for those patients who are transfusion dependent. Adults. So, eh? Adults. Adult this, this patients. This is a grown-up yeah, drug. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, adult patients because we don't have data yet in children. So those who are transfusion dependent, and what did we observe in those patients? A significant reduction of the blood transfusion requirement. So actually, if a patient was on a regular blood transfusion every two to three weeks, in quite a large proportion of patients, we observe a significant reduction. And to my point of view, this is a great improvement alternative to bone marrow transplantation or other possible approaches. So essentially you can go from getting two units of blood every three weeks to possibly getting one unit of blood every three weeks. Or that's you can, or even that's a big difference. Or you can go from getting two units of blood every three weeks to getting two units of blood every four weeks. Again a big difference. Again a big difference because now you're, you're and, and affecting... Uh, Sergi, you know that uh, some of the patients uh, we are going to say they decrease more than 50% uh, among those groups. There are some patients who are becoming transfusion independent. And overall, it was generally well tolerated. Yeah. There's some um, you know, increased risk of thrombosis and uh, hypertension, so we need to monitor that. Hyper, hypo. Hyper, hyper. hyper. But okay. overall, there were only um, grade one or two adverse events, including some joint pain, arthralgias, um, but overall very well tolerated, so that's very exciting. And uh, how it is administered subcutaneously, one injection every three weeks. So these patients, uh, hopefully, we have to be careful anyway, or conscious anyway, they can do it at home subcutaneously for the future, of course, as they do, a patient do insulin or something like that.